Okay, so we are going to keep talking about circuits and more specifically we're going to talk about electric power today. So before we get into that, let's go over the homework. So we have this sort of complicated circuit and all we care about though is what is the current and the voltage of the 125 ohm resistor. So what we have to do is just reduce this down. So first step is to combine, well actually I would say the very first step is to label these. I'm gonna call this R1, I'm gonna call this R2, R3, R4, R5, R6, and R7 that we are interested in. Obviously this I will just call V. So we need to combine these parallel circuits first. Okay, so 1 over what I'm going to call R23 is 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. And that gives me, when I solve for R23, 133.3 ohms. Okay, hopefully we're all okay with that. Add the fractions, flip it. Then I need to do R456. So 1 over R, 4, 5. Oops. First step here. Sub step. Is I need to combine 4 and 5. Right? So R, 4, 5 is equal to just R, 4 plus R, 5, which is 190 ohms. Now I do 1 over r456 is equal to 1 over r45 plus 1 over r6. Okay, 190 over 160, add those, flip them. And that gives me r456 is equal to 45.7 ohms. Okay, so Let's redraw our circuit now because now we have something like this. Oops. Still have R1. This is now R23. Then we have R. Four, five, six. And then R7. So that's what our circuit looks like now with these values, right? R23 plugged in, R456 plugged in. Okay. Well, now we can go to an R equivalent. Just add them all up. So R equivalent is R1 plus R23 plus R456 plus R7. So add them all up because they're now in series and I get an equivalent resistance for this circuit of 404 ohms. So I'm actually just going to go to a new slide now. So I now have just our equivalent. V is 50 volts. Our equivalent was 404 ohms. So I can find the total current is what we would call it. So I is just V over R equivalent, and that gives me 50 volts over 404 ohms, 0 0.124 amps. Okay, now this is a good number because if we go back here, we're interested in 
R7. Well, the current in this equivalent circuit is the same as the current in R7 because they're both just series circuits. So right away, we can jump to I7 is 0 0.124 amps, right? Look back at, our, back at our original circuit. The current leaves the battery, hits a resistor, splits, recombines, splits again, but then it recombines. So the current coming out of the battery and the current going back into the battery is the total current, right? Those splits, we don't know, but we don't care because we're after R7. So we have that. And then finally, now it's dead simple because now we can find the voltage across 7, which is just I7, R7, or 0 0.124 times 125 is 15.5 volts. That is V7. All good. Okay. So, still talking about circuits, but let's jump to now talking about electric power. So, we haven't spent much on power. We talked about power very briefly. You can think of power as being work per unit time. It can also be, I'm going to put some absolute values around this for the moment, right? Which is the same as potential change in potential energy per unit time. It is just generically, I like to think of power generically as energy in some form. That form can be work, potential, kinetic, over time, okay? It's how much energy is used in some amount of time. A more powerful car uses more energy quickly, right? That's how we want to think about it. So, so okay, fine. We have power is work per unit time. We're going to use the power is change in potential energy per unit time. We have to remember that the definition of voltage is just change in potential energy per charge. So we get this relation, QV equals change in potential energy. We can replace that, so we get change of potential energy over time is QV over delta T. And then if we look at this, that is just, we could write that as delta Q over delta T. That is current. So you don't need to know this derivation. It's just showing you where it comes from. We get the very, very simple formula that power is current times voltage. Very, very important formula. Okay, so electric power is current times voltage. If we make use of the other very, very important equation, which we've been exclusively using, Ohm's law, V equals IR, we can write it three different ways, okay? I only remember these two, and I derive the rest on the fly. I remember P equals IV and V equals IR. I always start with those two. It's just a good way to do it. I feel like doing the math Simple, you know, algebra on your paper is easier than trying to memorize all these things. So let's do some simple examples. Oh, first, yes. Uh, so what we have here, power transmission lines, right? This is how we get power from the power plant, whatever that may be, a dam, a nuclear power plant, in our case, burning fossil fuels, whatever it may be that creates the electricity to get it to your homes. These are called high voltage lines. Right, you've probably heard them called that before. So why are they high voltage? Well, they are high voltage because what you want is you want to transmit power. So we can play with the current and the voltage, right? I can have little current, high voltage, or I can have big current, little voltage, right? It doesn't matter. As long as they multiply to the power generated is determined by the power plant, so on and so forth. We're now talking about moving that electricity across the country. And so we choose to use high voltage, low current, okay? We do this because current is the thing that creates the resistance you can think of. Current is what heats things up. Current is the actual movement. So the less actual movement of electrons we have within the wire, the less friction there is, literally. 
So it's more efficient to transmit power at high voltage, low current than it is high current, low voltage, or really anything. And so, of course, this is an engineering, you know, you, you go back and forth for all sorts of things. It's also why these wires are very high off the ground because there's an incredibly high voltage. You don't want literally lightning strikes with the ground between these. That can happen if they're not high enough, okay? And basically, you have a thing that will change the current and the voltage on either side. And this is called a transformer. You've probably heard of that, too. Uh, hopefully, if we have time, we can talk about how transformers work. Okay. Enough of that. Let's do some problems. An electric space heater is connected across a 120 volt outlet. The heater dissipates 1320 watts of power in the form of radiation and heat. Calculate the resistance of the heater. I just want to say too that this is a pure, uh, you know, conversion thing here. An electric heater is taking electric energy and just purely converting it to heat. In a lot of sense, we would think it's just completely wasting that energy, but we need heat, so it's not. So, what do we do here? Well, I would first things first, I would write power IV, V equals IR. Those are my two equations. So what do I know? I know power and I know voltage. We want to know resistance. So, I don't know anything about current. So I would solve this equation for I and plug it in over here. So V squared over R is equal to P or V squared over P is equal to R. So 120 volts is what's coming out of your, that's your outlet at home. Oops, squared. 1320 watts gives us a resistance of about 11 ohms. And these are realistic numbers. 11 ohms is a very low resistance. And, you know, some of you probably have electric space heaters. If you have a house like mine that's pretty old, the, uh, you know, radiators, kind of water, heated radiators aren't enough. You plug something in in the dead of winter. All right, here's another. Not necessarily, this is really just units, but I really want you to think of it. So, we buy energy when we buy, we talk about it being a power bill. It's really not a power bill, it's an energy bill. So when we buy electricity, we buy it some amount of money per kilowatt hour, okay? So this is kind of a weird unit. The unit of energy is joules, but if we, so let's just remember power has the units of watts. Watt is a joule second, so technically watts times second is a joule, right? So a kilowatt hour is a unit of energy. It's just a weird unit. It's sold this way because we know our appliances and things like that are, the, we know the power of them. We know their wattage. Think of a light bulb, 100 watt light bulb. We know the power. So this is a, supposed to be an easier way. I don't know if people actually calculate this at all, but here we go. So the question is, how much does it cost to have a 100 watt light bulb lit for 24 hours? Well, this number is straight off my April electricity bill. I pay 24 cents per kilowatt hour. So let's see. That means I have 0 0.24 cents per 1,000 watts. That's a kilowatt times one hour. That's what we're saying. And so I want to know how much does it cost to have a 100 watt light bulb lift for 24 hours? Well, so times 100 watts times 24 hours. And so I multiply that all up. I really get 0 0.24 times 100 times 24 over 1,000. And you see we cancel, cancel watts, cancel watts, cancel hours, cancel hours. And what I get in my house, your house might be different, you might pay different for power. I pay about 58 cents to have a 100 watt light bulb lit for 24 hours. Now, in my house, we actually use much more efficient lights. A 100 watt light bulb is an incredibly inefficient, bad 
thing. So my point here is if your parents yell at you for wasting energy, turn off the lights. You can tell them it's not that expensive. Don't worry about it. Give them 50 cents. Okay. Two identical resistors of 20 ohms are hooked in series to a 120 volt battery. What is the power dissipated by the resistors in the circuit? So this is just saying what is the power of the circuit in some sense. We need to figure out P equals IV. So where's our circuit? 120. 20, 20. Well, first things first, get an equivalent circuit. So these are resistors in series. We can just add them. Okay. So what is the current now? Well, current is V over R equivalent. So 120 divided by 40. 3 amps in this circuit. So now the power dissipated by the circuit is just the current times the voltage. Three sixty, yeah. Three hundred and sixty watts dissipated by that circuit. Okay. All right. Now same deal, but they're hooked up in parallel. So one twenty. 20, 20. So let's do an equivalent circuit. Our equivalent, well, we have 1 over 20 plus 1 over 20 2 over 20 equals 1 tenth that means our equivalent is 10 ohms, right? So hooking two identical resistors up in parallel just reduces the resistance by half, right? Which makes a lot of sense if we think here, think back to this analogy, right? Adding another resistor just doubles the flow. Okay, so again, now we figure out so I V over R, 120 over 10, 12 amps, significantly more current when we hook them up in parallel. And power, 12 amps times 120 volts, 1440 watts, way more power way more power here than here, right? Uh, I should also note that also we could have done right from here, we have V and R, we could have done V squared over R. That would have given us 1440 as well. Same thing here. V squared over R, 120 squared over 40 that would have given us 360, right? This all works, it doesn't matter how you do it. But it's interesting how much faster, how much more power is dissipated in a parallel circuit. So if you wanna drain a battery, hook some things up in parallel, right? It will just drain them much, much, much faster, much more power dissipated this way. Okay, homework is gonna be working on stuff like this.